There we go. Engine 690 is en route for the crazy Canadian Railway, building up industry since 1888. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, shit. There we go. Oh, oh, crap. Uh oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. The freight cars are still going. Steel pipes and your crates will come from your IO works. So let's say, and you don't have to have it directly above the hole. You could be a little offset, which then comes back and connects to my main rail yard area. Yay, it's just like Canada. It's the real life Canada in, in an aspect. Holy, what kind of smokestack is that? We had a little bit of an accident, a little bit of a derail issue, but this is a rough idea. So Essentially, you want to be selling oil barrels, and oil barrels you would deliver right to your freight depot no matter what. Uh, locomotives, uh, their class specifications, you got all the different cars. Oh no, oh, you gotta be kidding me. By $40 a barrel, you're making a whopping $18,400. Okay, Th oh god, oh god, there they go, there they go, whoa, damn it. Hello rail fans, welcome to Railroads Online and today we're going to be taking a look at the Pine Lake Valley map and we're going to go over some different ways you can build up your railroad empire with some simple tricks and techniques. We're also going to go over some of the gameplay aspects, things you can do, uh, for instance the different locomotives, the different driving techniques, we're going to go over things like laying out your first town and freight depots along with what you need in order to build a successful railroad empire so for instance a good quality amount of rolling stock is going to be a key feature we'll talk about and we'll also talk about things like laying out your tracks and have and why the beneficial goodness of having more tracks and switches along with some of the rules that come with playing railroads online there are some unspoken rules in this game that not a lot of people are aware of but I figure this is my first railroads online video so I wanted to at least get a nice little show of all my trains now before we do get too deep into this this game can be a very big grind so do prepare for yourself the map that I'm about to show you is 150 plus hours of work uh, up here in the top left corner by the way it, there is an Easter egg that we'll show later in the video and overall we'll just kind of go over things how to enjoy and start up your your railroad empire so you can get the most and efficient uh, layout and industries built up quickly again as I said I've put over 150 plus hours. I have nearly 200 hours, but the other 45 hours is on the first map. So, first of all, let's go over some of the trains. Now, when you go to start Pine Lake Valley, a new save game, you're going to be offered three starting trains. The Porter, which is a not this exact version of the Porter. The Porter you get is the tiny one known as Betsy. This is uh, Bet's, Betsy upgraded version. Uh, you're also offered the Montezuma and then the Shea. Now, you don't see the Shea on my layout for two reasons. One, I'm not a big fan of the Shea locomotive. It's not, it's a good uphill locomotive, but it's not a locomotive that I would use to haul excessive amounts of goods. Like, honestly, even the Betsy probably performs better than the damn Shea. And then, it's always good. I find to start with the Montezuma, it does have a bit of a tendency to want to derail when going over switches too fast, so it's good to keep it around 15 to 25. Never go too fast when going over switches because switches can be a little bit glitchy. It's actually a good train though, that's a good starting train, and I saved up and went straight to the 280 right afterwards. Uh, cookie 280 consolidation works this is a grand grand old engine and i gotta say the crazy canadian railway which is the name of my railway by the way because well we canadians were pretty crazy and we're also but for this video we're going to be driving the 280 lima this is the newest engine to the game and this is also probably one of the best engines you can get 
for overall tractive effort, speed, and curvature. This train can do it all. It's a, it's a power horse. Yes, you'll notice these are both 690s, double numbered. The only reason why is on my multiplayer file, I have it set up so any trains with 690 on them are my personal trains that other people can't drive. But there is all, I have 12 locomotives. Some of them are doubled. So for instance, we have like the nice juicy ET WNC 280. This is Edward. Another train number six. This is another granddaddy super locomotive. Pretty good. We have another consolidation, the 260 Clyde, a wood, a wood burning locomotive. Over on the other side, we have another older fashioned locomotive, the 10 Mile. It's actually got a connected, um, its tender is connected to the locomotive itself. So in this case, when you see it's 10 mile, it's 10 wheels, or you got a two, two six, and I want to say it would be a two six six, but it's technically a two six zero. Now wheel, now wheel, um, wheel assortment is based off of two things. One, your front wheels. So if you have two small wheels, and then your big wheels. So in this case, we have a two six and zero because there's no actual wheels in the back. You don't count the tender. The tender is never counted. Here is the Montezuma, but fully upgraded. So that first train down at the front, this is that train, but if you were to get it fully upgraded. So this is engine number seven. This is Monty. A nice, perfect little example of what you can do for customizations. Over here, we have Denny, the DNRG Class 70. Another beefy looking locomotive. It's a pretty a pretty good locomotive to have. This tractive effort is almost as good as the Lima. Back here we have another 280. This is I just want to show this. It's a buddy of mine turtles, turtles train. Alright, so and in this video we're also going to look at the newly updated carriage cars. So you got nice little bathrooms in the back side, nice little toilet. Uh, you can't actually sit down in the chairs, which is a little unfortunate, but either way, for aesthetics, it's pretty cool. I just, one thing though, your guy is super tall, so he just walks like right through, his head's like right inside. One thing I hope this game does implement in the future is being able to customize your character. I think it would be cool if you can actually personalize them, because then you get a little bit more of a connection to the game. But yeah, that's just pretty much some of the locomotives. I like to have... Oh, I'm gonna have to edit that out. Alright, so we've talked about some of the trains and why I don't like the Shea nor the Climax. Those are two trains you will not see on here. My wife's just sitting here going, I don't like the Climax either. I don't, I don't blame her. So one new update to the game that you can actually do is uh, you can now work the wheat industry. So when you press G to open up your construction menu, you go to industries and there is a new industry at the bottom you can place down the wheat farm. And the wheat farm takes in the seed pallets and then if I'm not mistaken, you also get two different resources. So you got your uh, your wheat farm and then your straw bale, which in turn you can uh, pretty much sell back to the freight depot if I'm not mistaken. There's they haven't exactly updated what else you could do, so that's a cool little feature. One of the awesome features though with this up some of the updates is being able to place your own towns. This is the main freight town that I built up. It's literally one of those pop up towns when they weren't too worried about. Uh, <laughs> building construction quotas or having spacing in roads. It was literally just, all right, we need a town for the railroad, build up a town. And that's what we got here. So we have things like law offices, we have the church, we have random houses, doctor's office, we have saloons. Uh, then you got your uh, your barn or your horse stable. It, it's a nice like way to decorate your map. So I, I was actually really happy with this because now my freight depot doesn't look like it's just some random barren out in the middle of nowhere desert stuff. Now another thing though, unfortunately this is like a con. 
uh, when my tele when I was doing my telegraph poles, they were all connected, and then when some of the newer patch updates came out, my telegraph poles became disconnected. So that that apparently is an issue. A good thing to mention too, when you go to buy your next trains or even your rail stocks, I highly avoid don't buy the smaller um, freight cars. I know like they make sense to use for the for the porter or even like the tinier rail cars but skip right ahead to the bigger flat cars for instance um, this one here for log and steel pipe and then this lot flat car for beams lumber and rail just skip right to it because the porter if you do start with the porter in the other map you can haul two of these cars and then slowly build up like a third car and it will haul three cars it's a little it's a little stressful on the engine but it does work same thing goes with when you're buying your so for instance we'll go over all the engines that you can buy you got your starter porter your second to your porter you got your 10 mile the DNR GW this is a train I'd, I actually never use either and you got your Montezuma your Eureka, Glenbrook, Climax. This is one of the engines I'll never use. It's just it's tractive effort. Compared, like it has very good tractive effort, but not the, uh, just not my style. It's not a doesn't carry enough fuel in my in my instance. Nor does it have any style in my opinion. The Heisler, yeah, another train that I probably would never really use much. The Ruby Basin, a nice little train. It's got a decent little upgrades for it. The Shea, once again, this tractive effort is not enough compared to some of the other trains, nor is its speed as good. Very little uh, fuel amount as well. Then you got the Mosca, a very nice train, actually. This is a pretty decent style train. Very, very gold and professional. You got the Cook 260, the Cook 260 with the coal. 280 consolidation 280 consolidations have some pretty nice upgrades it's paints that you can get for it and we go into the DNRG class 70 it's only got yeah some of these trains don't have as many upgrades this uh, yeah that's a smokestack you'll never see me use right there uh, headlights pretty good amount of headlights depending on the headlights will actually give you the generator setup you got your paints, three paints for this one, and then your Lima only has two paint schemes. I th if I'm not mistaken, yep, this Lima can have uh, horns on its giant headlights, which is kind of funny and impressive. You can have the massive smokestack, the thick chungus smokestack, and then your regular stubs. One train in particular that does have a lot of different color schemes, if I'm not mistaken, was... Yep, this train. Yeah, you can have a Christmas train, you can have a blue steel train, your regular wood, like, clean cut paint. Yeah, there, there's there's this variant of it that has no paint changes. Same with the Mosca. The Shea has some paints, but again, I never use it. Ruby Basin has, like, that Thomas the Tank Engine type of paint feel. You got, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's a little, uh, I don't know. So, yeah, some of, the, some of the trains that you'll never see me use for instant reasons. Oh, the Glenbrook has some pretty standard looking paint colors. Not a lot of selection. Same thing with the Eureka. Yeah, you, there's not much that you can do with the Eureka. Same thing with headlights. And then this baby, yeah, this one you can actually have your relative standard upgrades. So you can change the paint once. Uh, this one's only got so many, yeah, just, let's see, 10 mile, oh yeah, the 10 mile has, I think, a pretty good selection of paint schemes, yeah, six paints, not bad, headlights, you got four different headlights, oh, no, you do, no, you have like eight, nine, nine headlights, wow, that's, that's quite the, the change up, you can have, oh, wow, even the smokestacks, holy, Holy, what kind of smokestack is that? That thing's a little obsessive. 
My lord, it drips down too. Interesting. Okay, so the 10 mile probably has the most amount of upgrades you can have for a train. It's just a little, little obsessive. Look at the size of that stack. That's a giant, humongous chungus. So a key thing to note in this game, telegraph posts or these telegraph uh, offices are probably some of the most important things you can have in this game, let alone your water and sand towers. These telegraph posts allow you to teleport to your different industries. So looking at the map, now my map, as you can see, I was building it up before they had the pre-placed buildings update. So when I built my layout, I decided, okay, I want to be able to at least have a nice long drive to enjoy my game because I do enjoy actually driving the trains. So my logging camp, I have way, oh, that's a loud beep, 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 beep. So my logging camp, I have way out down to the south, southern part of the map. So for instance, I can pull up here I can load up 10 cars of logs if I'm using the 280 Lima. You can use these yard limit signs. So once you have lined up your freight cars, you lined up your freight cars accordingly, and then you can make a mark with a yard limit sign. So when you are pulling up and you can't exactly see where your freight cars are lining, you use this as your reference, but you just have to remember if you use like putting it to the back of your tender or the very front of your train to make life simple so and the lumber yard has two resources you have your log or not lumber yard my bad the logging camp has two resources you have your logs and your cordwood cordwood you're gonna want to use for your um, iron smelter industry along with it gets turned into refueling wood so you can refuel your trains <laughs> Now, to the north and the very far north of my map, I placed my ironworks factory and then built this small uh, hilltop town with what appeared to be a, um, a road layout or like an old western trail that I decided, oh, I saw this on the map and wanted to put it on like to give it more scenery look. So I decided, oh yeah, I'm just using, now you, I always just place an industry and move around like god mode so I can get from place to place a little quicker. That's another thing that's awesome with this update. You place your industries and or you could use like hover around and you can actually go god mode a little bit so you can actually go around your layout. So my town here, it's very simple, very small. It's actually, I think this town is smaller than the, my first town. I have this little, little hoop loop I use this hoop loop to, when I come out of my uh, ironworks, or the, yeah, the ironworks factory over here, after I've delivered my stuff, or if I'm picking up, I can go up the line, and it doesn't matter what side I go, if I can go left or right, it's still going to bring me back to one of these lines. And so yeah, um, once that loops around, you can come down, you come down the mountain way, and these lines always come back and converge. Now, this is the only area where I didn't exactly do a double line, solely because there's this is a very long downhill trek. I try to keep my grades at around 3.0%. I don't go above or below, or and actually I'll go below. If you can go below 3%, that's perfect. But to maintain a good grade, you actually need if you go any more than three percent your locomotives are going to struggle especially with more load tonnage i play on the realistic weight mode with medium industry setting so it's a one-to-one -one scale with the what's made from the different industries so as you can see this is a very long trek down it snakes all around and it comes down and over and down and under again which then comes back and connects to my main rail yard area. This allows for a nice trek with not too relatively tight corners, but I can manage to go a good 20, 20 kilometers without potentially derailing. Some air, mind you, when I'm hauling up a lot of weight, it is a little different. So above here, you can see I have a very makeshift looking um, 
tower area, or not tower, my roundhouse tower. <clears throat> Over here is my roundhouse table setup. As you can see, I uh, mixed it up a little bit. I used different stuff to kind of give it more authenticity, kind of more so just to change things up and have different look and style. Again, I have a telegraph post. Now, I did have all my trains parked in here, but I decided, okay, I'll just bring them out for show. Your, the roundhouse is pretty simple. You just, when you want to add more tracks, you just turn your turntable, right? Rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. And once you position it, you can make more and more lines. So, for instance, you just take your track, you can connect it, and then you just, like, spread it out. It's nice and simple. Now I was saying at the beginning of the video we would go over some of the tips and tricks on how to better maximize and get more profits early and quickly. So we'll kind of do a little bit of that in between each segment as I find stuff to talk about. So once you get your first train loaded and started and get it all fueled up, you'll throw your you'll grab your wood by left clicking. You open up the inside and you just right click it and you have to look right into the firebox when you put your fuel in. Different trains will have different setups. So for instance, uh, I always have my brake, whenever I get out of a train, I put the brake on. Now some trains like the, like the ETWNC 280 have an actual generator. So when you actually use the generator, it'll turn the lights, lights on and you hear this cool little sound along with a compressor for air for the brakes. Now you want to have, I usually leave my compressor on. Generator you can keep off because you don't need to keep it on. The interiors of these trains are very well detailed as well. You can grab, you can grab the whistles, you can grab onto the regulator, you got your sander, your brakes, reversers. So there's a whole wide load of interactive when driving your trains. Some of your trains though you have to light the you have to light up oh you see it just like that you have to open that up light it and you close it we'll turn that back off so now that you have your train ready and golden good to go you are probably going to want to start off with some log cars you'll Try to buy, with whatever money you have, four log cars. You'll connect them, you can name them, you can put whatever you want. I usually put log, in, for different freight types, I'll put the actual freight type name on the car so I can remember. So you start off with four, four is a good start. You can buy as many as your amount of money can let you have. You tie your freight cars to the back of your train it's pretty simple. You literally just go up to it. You add your link with left mouse and then you right click to add and it'll connect. You can't really see it here. Now your brakes are automatically going to be on. So you got to turn them manually. Keep it at 0%. Now for an example, we're actually going to start getting the 280 Lima prepped and ready to go down the line. We'll have a nice little tour. So this coal fire train, you left click, you'll have a nice little shovel of coal. Shovel that into your firebox. Grab a couple more loads. Coal trains seem to have much better healed for fuel. So right there, I'm already at 85%. It's gonna heat up the boiler. You got some of these other doors that you can walk through so you can actually get to the front of your train if you're out and about. We'll close that up. You also have your window hatch you can open up which is nice and dandy. So you'll take your freight, you'll run your freight down the line. Now a key thing you want to keep in mind though is your distance. So I have my logging camp and my sawmill pretty much half of the maps away from each other. This is a pretty big map. I will say that now. So if you are looking for for a way to enjoy the actual train driving experience. I do recommend spacing your industries out, but uh, you don't need to space out all of them too far. So for instance, your refinery requires uh, steel, 
pipes from the ironworks. It needs lumber and it needs oil in order to uh, properly set up your industries there. All right, so now that you've got fuel in your train, it's bo bringing the boiler pressure up. You want to check that all your car brakes have been turned off, or at least they're set to the zero percent. That way, you're not having some random stoppage because it's a good way to be fuel efficient with your trains. Once you get it up to speed, you want to actually set your regular to zero. That way, it'll actually save on some of the boiler pressure. It saves on the fuel a little bit, even though no matter what, you the fuel will constantly be consumed. Okay, so we bring your regulator up a little bit. Ah, we better, uh, uh oh. Stop the train. Stop the train. We almost forgot something very important, and this is what I'm about to tell you will help save you from derailing your train, which in some point in the video, we will derail a train on purpose to show how to re-rail the train. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as you can see, I have a three, a, a triple switch. Now, it's already set. So I'm all good, but if I was to have it switched over to central or left side, it this switch does not turn automatically. So once you were to go over it, your train will derail. Now, here's a cool thing to keep in mind though. So this. So I'm going to change just this switch right here, and you'll notice something pretty interesting when we go over it. Now, depending on what's now, if you're going straight into the switch whatever it's set it will stay but when you're going over a switch from one of its two sides this will actually automatically switch to the side you're coming on from and I'll give a little demonstration of that it's interesting how the game's dynamics for that come into play because triple switches don't have that same function there it's more whatever it's set to you're kind of screwed over all right so let's get this baby rolling All right, so I got it moving, and you see how that switch just automatically shifted? The bell will ring after a little bit. Bell, we get it. This is what I never actually use the bell in this game because of it doing that. It does get a little excessive. So we don't need to turn that. I want, so just like an up and down rail section, I want to get my train onto the right side because with a double rail line, you want to have it set up so it's like going up and then going back, kind of like American Roads. Now, I don't need to go that way. That way is towards the lumber and oil field welds. We just want to go up towards the actual oil refinery, which is where we'll go start first. That's good. That's set up there. Perfect. There. Now that's all set and you can look about as you're walking back up, you know when you go to do your rail lines and you don't have to change it when you come back. So depending on your freight, I usually find it's better to send your freight to the actual industries. You still get the same amount of money you need that you would get from selling those those different freights. And there's actually a guide on Steam that's pretty useful that I use to get a rough idea of all the different stuff. Actually, we'll take a quick little look at the guide. It should be right over in my first little spot here. Yeah, the resource flow chart by MG Dawson. Now, it's not exactly updated. This resource chart gives an actual nice good look at where your resources go to and how much they make per, uh, per freight car. So, uh, what load value per full car so rails for instance you got like 18 per 10 car coal for a 10 out of car but this is a rough idea so essentially you want to be selling oil barrels and oil barrels you would deliver right to your freight depot no matter what all right and it's going to be nighttime so what i'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go to my options and gameplay and you could set the time of day back so I like to do nice early morning my day in length I have changed from 45 to 15 minutes so my one day is an hour 
but most of the time it's during the day because I just, I just prefer it like that. It's the cool thing about this game is you can actually set it up the way you want. So you can even have dynamic weather or custom weather. I have it set to clear skies for now. But if you want, you could set it to be a blizzard. Yay, it's just like Canada. It's the real life Canada in, in an aspect. Trying to and driving in a blizzard, you will have things like slippery railroads. The snow will slowly build up, so you'll have to buy a snow plow and attach it to the front of your train, giving a much more immersive playthrough. But for now, let's just let's just keep it at uh, clear skies for now. Yeah, that that's more like it. Nice clear skies. So we're actually not going to take this train up towards the in oil refinery industry. That was just like a rough idea if we were doing. What we're going to do next is go up my mountain pass and show, give some rough ideas of how you want to actually drive your train up the mountain with a full, with a heavy cargo car. Something that a lot of other players don't usually think of when they do join a railroad online server, someone else's layout, I've noticed a lot of people tend to want to simply get on a train and derail it and sometimes it's understandable some people like to play train games simply for the fun aspect of derailing a train and watching the outcome of it coming off the rails and sliding down a mountain but when you join someone else's railroad it's out, uh, a thing of out of respect like for instance uh, you don't just hop on the biggest train you see because for all you know there could be a reason or that could be someone's private train. There's a bunch of different aspects to think about so you usually want to go up to the person whether you're playing with a friend on Discord or you're just like joining someone's random thing. If I'm not mistaken there is some type of chat system. I might be wrong. Oh L, L for lantern. That's always good for nighttime. So. With that in mind though, just anytime you do go on someone's server, just, just be courteous. Don't take the biggest train. At least show that you're a competent train driver and that you know how to do the layout and understand the components of how they designed it. If you go onto a train a server and you notice, oh, this layout's like crazy, then there's a good chance it was designed with the motion of derailing on purpose. Oh. Okay, so this is how I get around my, so if I have all three of my lines are completely booked, this is how I get around with the whole turning my train around without having to decouple every single freight car, every single car. You pretty much have a system that allows you to back up into a spot and you, oh, there we go, forgot to set the reverser. There we go, reverse that train. So we're going to back our train up into my rolling stockyard. There's a bypass lane in the middle of it. I try to keep it as realistic as possible. So for, if you are in a rail yard area, it's, the speed's usually between 10 and 15. You don't want to go too fast when hitting these bends. So, and now I'm coming up to another third switch line or three rail switch line. So I'm going to want to stop my train. I really shouldn't just jump out of it when it's still rolling, even knowing that the brake is on. Okay, so we're going to switch that to the middle line. And then we switch this one to be straight in the middle. So you have, these are your majority f types of freight cars. We've already gone over the log cars. And then you have your actual lumber beams, uh, rails, and iron. So I put like L-R-I-R-B. Then you have your cord and barrels. And then you have your copper, copper and coal hoppers. Your copper, oops, my bad. I meant to say coal hoppers. Bleh, my bad. And then your crate tools. Now, I noticed you don't, so you don't actually need a whole bunch of these box cars to do really good. Most of the places that need tools, you can literally fill it up with just the four because 32 64 96 and right there you're pretty much filling out the 100 so that's a good way to save money you don't need to have a whole bunch of box cars I do recommend having a crap ton of cord and barrel cars 
uh, your lumber cars and your log cars. Those ones you'll definitely benefit from having a lot of. So this, we don't have to switch this, but it's always good to go up and back the line. You want to just have all your switches ready to go. That way you're not running into an issue where you're backing into a switch and it's not set. So to get a rough idea of what I do here, we pretty... Oh, here we go. Here's a good way. If you want to get, like, if you're getting some nice cinematic views, take that. Then you can... There you go. Now you can look away. So as you can see... There's, it's kind of like a little triangle shape, or I guess some would say this looks like a uterus. I don't know why. Apparently they don't know what a uterus looks like. It splits off, so we're going to go up this line here, but I need to turn my train around. So I'm going to back it up. And then we're going to pull straight forward into this area, right behind this train. And then we switch our line over. Yeah, we're going to have to take the longer way. It should still work with all those trains in the way. If not, that's okay. There's another... I have another way that I can do this. Which involves going up and around to the oil refinery where I have a loop around. So I can come back and just come straight through here. Which is something I'll probably actually do because something tells me I... Having all of my locomotives like this, it's not very practical. You wouldn't want to fill up your uh, <laughs> your entire rail line like this. It just uh, doesn't help. Or I could back up into this town area, and I'd have to place my train set up into this area. But then, yeah, no, I have that set up differently as well. So it, planning out your rail yards and rail lines is very crucial if you want to be efficient to save time because switching out cars can be a little time consuming if you, you are having to go back and forth so much. Ah, crap. God damn it. How, what happened? Why, why did this, what, what, what hit? What hit? Ah, oh, God damn it. Damn it. Uh, I hit something. I don't know what it was, but apparently I hit something. Ah, crap. Well, okay. So, we had a little bit of an accident. A little bit of a derail issue. I guess this is a good time as any to show how the re-railing works. So, this does happen sometimes where your train just decides to completely derail with no actual cause or reason. It wasn't going too fast, but anyway... This isn't the derail that I wanted to do, so we'll actually have a proper derailing later. So, when you have a derail, you're going to click on the re-rail option. You click on the car, coach, DSP, it pops up. And then, just like that, you look at the track, and it'll reposition it. Boom. Just like that super simple super easy you just have to reconnect all your cars and you want to turn on the brake when you go to do it as well so to recap you click on the re-rail option in G so you press G click re-rail you click on the car it should come up with the name right beside re-rail in the little uh, text bar there you look at the track you have to get some back distance Sometimes if the car is too close like that, it won't actually uh, re-rail properly. So in this case, we could go all the way back here, place it down. Sometimes it won't line up perfectly like that. Ah, crap. That's because of the switch. These cars are still new and do have some bugs still. So do keep in mind, it's the regular freight cars that actually work better when using the re-rail. Uh, yeah, this, this is going to be a mess. I need a second. Another thing we should probably go over, just in case people do have difficulty with this one thing. Uh, it's always good when you're trying to connect your tender to your train. So, you just need a little bit of speed to bring it to the back. You want your tender to have... You left click on that. It'll put the stick. Boom. Boom. That was a little fast. The brake on your tender needs to be on 100% in order for it to stop the train. 
and then you look at the end piece that connects into the engine and you should be able to right click and boom it is now in your tender is now connected to your train and that's a good start to that so yeah I had to reload the save file and move move my one train over just so I could uh, do this the way I wanted to alright so I'm just gonna quickly back my train up into my round table station and then because I will when I back up and I clear that switch I'll be able to go straight up into the mountain pass and as we're going up the mountain pass we will talk we will finish off the discussion about some of the key aspects of the gameplay so for instance driving up the mountain uh, and of course some of the different strategies that I used to play this game to maximize my profits and to overall enjoying the game and why I find this game to be as interesting as it is Another cool feature, or I think it's more of a bug now that I think about it, when you're refilling your train, I actually recommend uh, you, you have to refill your train in the tender in the back. There's a little hatch. This hatch here, you can lift up and you would drive underneath. Oh, it looks like they, oh, there's a little glitch there. It's sealed looking. Interesting. Okay, but anyway, I've taken advantage of this one bug where you can actually overfill your tender to the point where it never empties. So I've had 4,500 liters of water in my tender ever for pretty much three quarters of this train's life. I've never had to refill. I've only filled it once and it that's allowed me to pretty much have this whole, oh, I can spend more time delivering cargo and not having to worry about if I'm going to run out of my water fuel and stuff. Alright, so we have to take this nice and slow. And yes, as I mentioned before, my telegraph poles started to glitch out. I tried using a system where I would put them closer and it would connect. However, that didn't work. So telegraph poles are one issue that hopefully they will fix. If the developers ever do watch this, I wouldn't be be awesome if they do watch this video hi devs great game love it so I'm just backing my train up into my round town table area call it pound town sometimes all right we switch that we're gonna pretty much pretend like we just came out from that station over there or what I could do oh no oh you gotta be kidding me Okay, I know what's happening. Okay. Ah, oh, crap. God damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I will admit, I've actually never used these cars yet. They've, I, because there was an update and they uh, took out the cars, the carriages. Uh, so I'm under the impression that the carriages cannot handle curvatures of 15%. I don't know. This is a pretty tight curve, I will admit, but god damn it. Considering some of my curves going up my mountain are just as bad. Uh crap. Okay, let's see what happens if we can we re-rail that back onto there. Okay, so that worked. Okay, let's let's see what happens. Maybe it's just because of the reverse. There is that possibility that's just because the reverse is not as good. So we're going to try reconnecting our, our passenger cars. I keep having these random derailments at the worst time. I thought I had this all planned out properly. God damn it. Okay. So we're going to back up. We're going to see what happens if the next car will derail. Yep. Ah, crap. It's derailing. God damn it. Ah, no. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. What happened? Why is this? Why? Oh, the switch switched halfway through. Oh, <laughs> what happened? Why? Why is this happening? Ah, oh, God damn it. This is like the third derailment in this video. I, I wanted this to be nice and proper and keeps. Ah, God damn it. Okay, so I decided to load up, so I had two save files, one's for recording and one's the actual industry build-up playthrough. Uh, unfortunately, 
I kept derailing the carriages. I guess they're not too steady with my rails. This is a narrow gauge railroad, so to be frank, I'm not actually disappointed about that. So we're just going to skip to the next segment, and that's your end game, uh, end game products. So, the best way I can describe this end game product of making oil barrels, you're going to be crunching a lot of crude oil into this system. And in order to get the crude oil, you have to deliver beams, steel pipes, and crate tools to the oil well, oil fields. You deliver those from the ironworks, or sorry, steel pipes and your crates will come from your ironworks, whereas your beams call from will come from your sawmill. So you deliver all that to your oil field. It's a very long grind. So what I like to do, I, I was doing it, but now this is pretty much almost empty. I was doing five to six loads of crude oil with my six cars. I keep my crude oil cars at the oil field just to make life a little easier so my switching gear is not too backed up. But what I find is if you deliver, so for instance, this industry has run out of lumber. They need lumber to turn into the actual barrel. So I leave that empty and I build up my supply of pipes and oil. And once I've delivered enough, like I try and get this number up to four, five hundred. Sometimes, if I can, I'll get it right up to six hundred because it's only eight or eight thousand liters, and each one thousand is worth one point. So you will end up doing a lot of crude oil runs to build that up. You still get paid for it. So, for instance, I'm a level nine. My XP is at one hundred forty-two thousand. I've got forty-two grand saved up and that's pretty much from constantly delivering stuff over and over and over like just the repetition if you are a fan of the repetition games definitely for you you will notice however you can only deliver so much lumber for instance i'll take four lumber cars and i'll deliver two sometimes three if i can fit it in the back it's mostly two i'll pull out take the two empty cars put it on this center line and then empty my other two rehook my line back up and then I drive right out yeah cuz this is the one thing I wish they didn't do was this whole having to you can only deliver, deliver so much lumber and so many pipes without having to take your freight cars off your oil field however is set up so it's got three it's one line so you got your steel pipes your beams and your tools so you could literally have one train of each type back in here and deliver as much as these platforms can hold I have three lines so when you're doing your oil actually loading your oil into your cars there is a safety valve here hand valve that you have to turn after you adjust these chutes so you want to adjust your spouts accordingly so let's say, and you don't have to have it directly above the hole. You could be a little offset, and it'll actually still fill up your car. It's nice, though, for realistic purposes to have it lined up and sit right above the hole line. But if you're not, that's okay. It ends up working out the way you want. And then you have your hand valves over here. As you can see, I have six crude oil cars. I only run six at a time with this, just because it gets a little harder and harder to figure out exactly to line up those cars sometimes you could use the whole use a sign use a rail yard sign to show like when you're at uh, 10 cars or 8 cars but I always keep these cars fully loaded as you can see there is the weight so 8,000 kilograms or 17,637 pounds worth of fuel of crude oil but it's measured it in a point system so 8 eight points of fuel so that you're gonna have to fill that crude oil tank pretty pretty much a lot so you're gonna be running a lot of crude oil back and forth but it is worth it because once you are building up these oil barrels let's say you have this entire platform full of oil barrels and you have enough that you could fill uh, for an example, if we do 
if each car is 46 so if I have 10 cars times 46 each 460 barrels and now you times that 460 by $40 a barrel you're making a whopping $18,400 that's like a heavy bang for buck and that is why you want to maximize delivering your resources as best as you can because the more you if you can actually fill that tank of a thousand and after you filled your platform with barrels come back and fill up your steel pipes and your wood till it's as full as possible that way as you're loading your train full of barrels it's replenishing five barrels at a time every so often it'll replenish barrels like as it's making more and more while you're loading your train so this little bar here will go up you keep track of it and as you're offloading this little ramp here the first barrel sometimes tends to fall off the off the the side of the platform but that's okay it's just one barrel sure it's 40 bucks 40 bucks is 40 bucks right but you, this is a great way to get yourself built up so you can have multiple trains and if you have a whole bunch of friends playing together you could have one person or the employer would be delivering the oil barrels to everything while your employees are building up the rest of the goods at all the other areas like your coal mine your iron mine and then you can have like your new guy you would probably have starting at the logging camp and sawmill your smelter your smelter requires you to have a good surplus of cordwood and iron. So for instance, I'm all out of cordwood here. Cordwood, you get like a hundred here, but the more and more you have it loaded, it'll constantly keep like refilling your actual um, product output. I only have like 112 iron ore left here. And I learned the hard way, you don't act, just like the oil refinery, you can't bring it all. The, you can't bring your track all the way back and through. Because if I were to try and drive over this, it will derail. So I was just uh, I was testing that theory out to see what would happen, but it it didn't work out. It worked out very horribly, just like the last few derails. So your smelter will create the necessary rails. Rails get delivered to your iron mine, and your iron your actual iron blocks or raw iron you would deliver to the ironwork station so your coal mine now just keep in mind I put my coal mine and iron mine close together just because of trying to these built industry buildings they don't look good when they're not beside a mountain or a hill so your coal mine needs beams and it needs rails in order to output a nice steady amount of coal. So you'll bring your coal hopper and you'll drop your chute down right above it and then fill it up until it's like, you don't want to overfill and lose product because then you're, you're not maximizing your profits and you're healed. Same thing with your iron mine. Your iron mine, luckily, it only needs lumber and beams. It, that's pretty much so that when they're building the mines, they're actually making support frames that would secure the mine shafts. So it works out pretty well. This is a very easy industry to boom up and boom out. Same thing with the coal. You just you drop your chutes down, it goes into your hopper, and you fill your hoppers and you deliver them to your smelter. And from there, you you start getting bang for your buck. Okay, so we're actually going to do a little bit of a delivery because I do need to. I want to at least show how to load some of the cars because sometimes uh, when you position your train on the platform, it doesn't always go as planned. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take these uh, cars here. We're gonna load up iron. We're gonna try and load up a crap ton of iron. Uh, we're also gonna get a little bit of wood. We're gonna deliver it up to the actual iron work. So it's gonna be a bit of a trek, but it does. It, this will show a good like standard way of when you are delivering goods. Now, just like in the first map, in the first map, 
all your industries are spread out to a point where you're spending a good hour just getting from one place and then an hour back which is a little little too much for me i do enjoy driving trains of course oh i need to put more fuel in this one so we'll load up our firebox now i'm hope this shouldn't derail i think it's just those carriages still need a couple more updates uh or it's maybe my railroad's just a little too tight that that's that's also a probability so we're going to set a reverser get the regulator we still have some built-in boiler pressure so that's rolling I'm just doing this to be quick that's already set so now we're going to connect to our our freight cars oh whoa there we go not too fast you don't need to go too fast all right and because of the brakes I always set the brakes on my cars so that will actually slow the train down as I hook it up there we go and now we are coupled Go to your handbrake, turn it off, and we are now ready to go forward. So in this case, because I'm on my freight yard, I have to go past my bypass line, and then I'll have to back up into the lumber. So I'm only going to grab 6, 12, 18, 24, so four cars of lumber, and then the rest will all be iron. All right, now we can finally get into some dr train driving. If you want to get rid of this bar at the bottom, press Y to go into the cinematic view, pretty much, or not really cinematic, but the barless view. I don't know if there's an actual cinematic view, like where you get to see an upshot of your train going up the line. If there is, then I would like to know in the comments section below. Maybe it's in the controls and I just didn't see it, fa like right there and then. Nothing like a beautiful day out on the railroads. All right, so we're gonna gain some speed. We're gonna build up our, uh, we're gonna get, we're pretty much building up the pipes that we need for the oil well and the, um, the refinery. So you will, it, it does help to have multiple people on your server. That way you can build up your necessary resources. All right, so I got myself on the right track and now I've set up two of these industries to pretty much piggyback on the same line. So since I'm actually at the ironworks first, I'm going to load up my iron first that I'll need to take up to the mountain. So a good example of knowing how to position your freight cars when you're pulling up to your station. You don't need to have these tracks right beside your platform. It's actually better if you have them spaced out. I made this mistake at the ironworks and now one of my things I can't load unless or else it starts to hit. So you want to pull into your station nice and simple. You want to slow down to a nice steady. Now as you can see if you actually line your first car right with the edge of the platform as best as possible. There you go just like that. You can center out the crane so it lines up to the middle of there and then the second crane lines up almost to the middle of that car as well. So now you just click on the cranes. The cranes will start to load up your freight. Now I am playing on medium settings so it's a one to one ratio. If you play on easy, uh, I think it does the same thing, but check this out. It's loading up the freight. We're at 95 out of 100 and pretty soon we'll see it. Oh no, it actually won't go up because we're out of cord. We're out of cord wood. So the smelter right now is on standby. Most people aren't working. They've all been laid off. Now, unfortunately, because this is, I, I'm, I'm wondering if these could hold five if they were to update it because yeah this <laughs> some of the freight cars hold a lot more weight than this all right so now the first two freight cars are loaded we're going to pull our train up no don't reverse no need to reverse set your regular to 20 you just gotta move up nice and simply you don't want to just go gun ho 
you'll risk having to, you'll go too forward and then you'll have to reverse and you spend more time trying to realign. So you want to do it all right the first time and lined up. Now, as you get further and further away with your freight cars, you are going to have to figure out or eyeball, as I like to do, where your uh, cars will line up. So once you get down to like your eighth and ninth car, it's very hard to see, or if you're like me, depending on your perspective of sight, lining this up gets harder and harder. So I do recommend things like using different signs. So you got uh, sign text, which allows you to, I think if I'm not mistaken, you can place down uh, your own text for the sign. So, oh, nope, that's the Railroad's Online Winky. If you press H, It'll actually give you all the information you need, everything about the different uh, locomotives, uh, their class specifications, you got all the different cars, your facilities, industries, rail types, your freights, and then of course all your main menus, how, to, how they all work and run. So as I was saying, I don't like this train for the Shea, the A15-2 Shea, it is not I, I don't know, it, it, it's got its uses on mounts and stuff, but compared to something like uh, um, the Montezuma, yeah, the Montezuma, there we go, and this is the upgraded version of it too, It's I find it's a much better train, just overall, even like the Mason Bogey 266, or even the Eureka, but when you go down to the 280 consolidation where you're paying $7,500, is a it's tractive effort 88,020 compared to where's the other not that one so that's 68,000 oh god not that train oh, okay yeah here it is DSMP the cookie the two the two six and the two eight 59,904. So right there between these three trains here, when it comes to tractive effort, you're definitely going to want to go up to the Lima 280. It says the top speed of 30, but I've actually managed to get it past that, but I think that's only because it's been going downhill. It goes downhill when I get that speed. If you do want something with more speed, like and more like the same a decent amount of tractive effort, you're going to want to go with the Baldwin's 1024. This, yeah, it's a beautiful train overall. All right, so we now have our six cars loaded with iron. So we are going to start making our way to the lumber yard to fill up all, all of our wood that we're gonna need when we bring it up to the ironworks factory. Now, because I want to stay on this line that I'm on, I'm actually going to pull the switch. Pull the switch! I do not recommend getting out of your train when it's actually going, like when you're driving. Going, There are the potential possibilities that you'll get flung off of it. And last thing you need is a runaway train. This is not a... Uh, a thing that you want because you can go god mode and try and line yourself up to get onto your train which now is a great handy thing but at the past if you didn't uh, if you accidentally got off your train as it was moving you were screwed you're absolutely screwed there's nothing you could do all right so I'm gonna back this up into what should be my lumber yard and we'll grab some wood So if you're like me and when I was first building this railroad, I I wasn't too I was a little careless with my turns, but I did want things to line up in a way where I wasn't trying to struggle and have to go around bends so hard. So yeah, this is a very tight curve. Like you probably won't want yeah, you probably can't get the passenger cars through this area, just knowing for a fact. I might have to build an entire separate line just for the passengers. <laughs> Which will be okay, because then I can add more to my rail line. But you have to go a nice, steady, 
amount of speed. You don't want to go gun ho. For instance, I never go over 15 in this area. I'm, it's either between like 8 and 12. So since I'm getting close, I'm going to try and line up my back cars first. So nice and steady. This is always a tricky part. I probably should have added signs so that when I am doing this with my 10 tank carriage, I could probably carry a lot more carriages than I actually realize. This is, this train with its attractive effort, it does handle really well on an uphill, but that's dependent on the grade, an incline or decline of your railroad. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I like to stay with a 20 or 20, bleh, a 3% grade. Uh oh, see? Now let's see what happens. Will it load into this car or will it load into the front car? Let's see. Oh, okay. So that worked out. So let's try with this one now. This. Now, all four of these cars I have reserved. Oh, okay, perfect. That worked out. Uh, okay, yeah. So because it's a little confused. The game's trying to wonder, like, it can't really continue to keep loading because it thinks there isn't an actual f car there to load into. So I have to, I have to keep hitting the button in this case, which is all right because it kind of adds a little more immersion. Whoa, duck! Don't get hit by a thing of wood. Oh crap! Don't get hit by it. Damn it. See, yeah, I'm definitely carrying more weight in the back than these, uh, the, <laughs> the iron, the raw iron would be. Which is uh, impressive, but I think it's probably something to do with, um, the stability, because the higher of the weight, it's gonna want to flip the car. So let's see. This is 9,855 pounds, and this thing of lumber here is now sitting at, oh god, that's pretty much double. That's almost double the weight. That's interesting. 8,100 kilograms, and this here is, oh, okay, it's not exactly double, but you see what I'm saying, though. You could really add two more pallets of raw iron onto these cars, even one. Two more, you might hit the top of that line, but damn, if only, it doesn't let you. Okay, this should, yep, that's now loaded. Good, good. So now we're gonna pull our train back a bit and we'll try and line it up again. All right, I think right there. I'm hoping that lined up. If it didn't, I'll be a little sad. Oh, oh, hey, that's not too bad. That's a little better. There we go. So that should hopefully be a little more automatic. All right. And that's now loading up. Sweet. We'll have a full, a nice full trains worth of raw materials to deliver to the ironworks factory. All righty. Our train is loaded. We are currently going to, so we're going to end up backing up into the starting rail yard section. Pretty much we're going to back up just like I was trying to do before. That way I can have my train go straight up the mountain. I could loop around and go the longer way, but I think it's just easier if I go in reverse at this point. You have to do a little bit of reverse work sometimes little but at the same time there are ways around it so I could have set up a separate line that connected out and goes all along the side of back in the forest and then would go up the mountain but at the same time railroads were uh, I mean well this is a game so you can do whatever you want but I, I try and keep it a little realistic mind you my rail lines do not look realistic at all now that I think about it so we're going to back this train up and we are going to go past our starting point. We'll back up into the turn round table area and then we can just go straight up the mountain. All right, so all of our switches in the back area are all lined up and set. So as you can see, there's a lot of rail here and I'm about to go into a single line that goes straight up the mountain. 
I wanted to add a double rail line up this area that would follow along it. But then there was no actual need. When I say that, I've been do playing this all on single player most of the time. Like I've had maybe two people, two of my friends come and join, Turtle and Derb540, aka the Foley. And I mean, they've only been able to do so much because when, when you're uh, a working a working dad and you have to maximize your time sometimes and if I work late then I'll maybe play an hour and a half of this get at least one delivery or two done so we are backing into my uh, little rail yard area I know nothing's gonna derail here uh, so I know it's definitely the carriages that have their issues oh and it's almost nighttime yeah that's the lighting looks looks all right it is a little uh, little hefty okay so now we stop our train put a reverser forward as you can see when I had all my trains out this is where I was had them all parked oh they're all ringing their bells so I'm just going to quickly change my daylight and one thing I like to do just so I keeping the days going forward I'll move it forward there we go, now it's at 12.01, 12.02. The line just switched back. Now I'll set it to, let's set it to when I wake up. So pretty much at 5 a.m. All right, 5 a.m. Oh yeah, it's still dark. We're gonna need to turn our light on. All right, so we have our light. We got our little lantern that we're carrying around. We're gonna take Phoenix up the mountain. Yes, I named this train after my son. Because he's strong, beefy, and sometimes has tantrums. Okay. This is the fun part. When you actually get to drive difficult terrain. So we are now... Oh, crap. I almost forgot to switch my... Switch the switcher. The switchy switch. So you gotta switch that. So we go straight up the mountain. It's gonna be... Yeah, I have to take it one bit at a time. And if you don't really want to sit through this entire part, because I'm probably not going to cut a lot of this mountain view. Oh, sun's coming up. So we can actually turn our headlight off. All right, the dawn morning. So yeah, this section of this part of the video, it's going to be a little long, but it is going to outlay my entire uphill rail system that I have, all my zigzags. So you can skip ahead if you want. If that's up to you, I will have a timestamp. I hope I remember timestamps. If I don't, make sure to leave a comment and I'll uh, do that when it's appropriate. Okay. Okay, here we go. We are going to go up the up our mountain way. This is our uh, only route up to that town. So we are going to want to gain some speed here. So we'll set the regular a little higher. Because we're... We've got a pretty good amount of weight, and yes, there's a glitched rock at the top. That happens sometimes when you're taking some of the landscape and the trees and the rocks. Alright, so we're going to actually set a regular layer to 100%, because I want to gain, I want to be up 15, 15 kilometers an hour. Yes, I'm in Canadian. There we go. Engine 690 is en route. For the crazy Canadian Railway, building up industry since 1888. So as I mentioned before, I'm not going to cut this next bit. It's all going to be one continuous piece of length. So this might be the bulk of my video. Alright. We're going 18. 18 is actually just good enough speed for this entire zigzag so we'll keep up that speed we're gonna get a nice good view shot of some of our industries as we go up this area there's the lumber yard and then you got the smelter down in the side oh we're going a little too fast now we're actually getting some good speed going around the mountains we'll actually set the regular to zero for now get a little cruise. Ah, here's that the choke point. 
This is where the turn radius gets a little tight. Losing speed. We're, we got a little bit of a shake. I guess you have to... I always go 15 around this corner specifically, and then I build it right back up. Some areas you do want to watch your speed and be more careful and cautious. Alright, so now we can put the regular speed back up. Yep, we are definitely making the grade. This entire grade is between 2 and 3%. In some areas it goes right down to 0, nice and even. Oh, Nally. Come on, Phoenix. We'll be climbing up the mountain when we climb. We'll be climbing up the mountain when we climb. We'll be climbing up the mountain. We'll be climbing up the mountain. We'll be climbing up the mountain when we climb. Yeah. All right, now we're going to... Yeah. Oh, boy. Slow her down. Slow her down. Okay. Um, this is a test. I'm testing to see if we can actually go 25 around this bend. Oh, so far so good. Okay, that's because we, we ended up slowing down too. There we go. Build that speed back up. The Lima 280 is probably one of my favorite consolidation work engines in history of all of consolidation engines. This train was pretty much built to haul America. Well, in this case, I'm hauling Canada. I think Canada, CP Rail, I think, bought a few 280s in the past. Or at least in wheel ratio, yeah, they would have been 280s, but consolidation works. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Alright. Look at that. We're probably about a third of the way through our journey up the mountain right now. Hauling 10 cars full of freight. Oh look, there's that tree grew back. At this point, I can almost keep my regulator at 100%, but I am being safe. You want to be safe rather than sorry, because trying to re-rail your train in this area is a bitch. Every time we hit a straightaway, my regulator is back up to 100. Now this case, because there is this is the 3% grade all the way up and through. Set that down back to 44, so we're losing a little speed. But we're still using our tractive effort. Oh, that's a beautiful. It's a tight turn. Okay, we are now up to the very top length part of this part of the mountain. Look how high we've climbed. So yeah, your, your guy sits very tall in the engine. But I guess that's okay. Or we'll open a window. You can lean with R, you, T and R. So T right now is allowing me to lean at the right side. Where's my regulator? Let's increase that. There we go. Ah. Damn. Damn glitches. As you can see, we are very high up on this bridge area. The only thing I haven't very much learned how to do in this game is how to build the stone bridges. I know a lot of people are probably going, where's your stone bridges? You wouldn't spend all these resources building a bridge like this, this elevated. You'd have a stone bridge somewhere. Yeah, you're right, you probably would, but at the same time, I like the scenic the scenic routes in this game. It's how I enjoy this game as I'm driving the train. I'll just look out the window and see the nice big mountains. Or even in this aspect, just this this right here. This is a beautiful shot. Just way up and my guy is like his right arm is sticking out. 
Yeah, we have the regular at 100%. We are climbing up a 3% grade, and there we go. There's the speed gain. When going downhill, though, you will make use of your tender's break, I find. Uh, it, it does help if you do activate it a little bit. That way, as you're going downhill, you don't start to overspeed. Going over 35 on a downhill with these this many angles is almost a death sentence. At least down in the zigzag curve area. This area, however, is a lot more controlled and confined. These are much nicer turn radiuses. Wait, what am I doing? Let's just, you know, hit the actual... You can open the hatch. There we go. We'll get some fresh air. Woo! I'll be riding two eight zeros when I come. I'll be riding two eight zeros when I come. I'll be riding two eight zeros. I'll be riding two eight zeros. I'll be riding two eight zeros when I come. Money. I wanted to build the town in this area. So if we look on the map where I'm at, just coming over. So my rail line goes up and around this whole zigzag. And then all along the side of this mountain, we're pretty much almost as far north as you can really go. We're cutting it pretty close. We're almost there. Once we clear this area of the forest, actually you can see the stack of the ironworks right now. And we're almost going in a full speed of this engine's capability, but I know it can go faster on a straightaway when carrying less weight. This is pretty much an example of it carrying like a three-quarter, 80% of its weight limit. All right, now that we have made it up the mountainside, telegraph poles you can see again. Ah, oh, they disconnected here as well too, damn it. Okay, what's that switch? All right, switch is at the right spot. So we are good to go straight and into the factory area. So far, so good. We didn't have a derailment. Don't worry. At the end of this video, we will have... I will do some kind of derailment for those that are watching this video just simply for train derailments. I don't blame you. I, I like a good derailment here and there too. I just need to at least save uh, once I, I'm done delivering all this and make sure that I have my train in a good setup. Okay, we are going to prepare for the offload. Usually once you approach a station, you would hit your bell. I'm not going to hit the bell because the bell gets a little too excessive sometimes. All right, we are naturally slowing down because of the weight. Oh, we're also going to need to deliver more coal here at some point. Pretty much, like, I built up my thing and did all the stuff required, and then it just, I, before I recorded this video, I realized, oh, most of my industries are pretty much empty. <laughs> so I had to refill it all, because the end game is to make oil barrels. Oh, I went a little bit past. That's okay. I'll just let the train, the weight of the cars and the downhill is pulling it just a tad. So we'll get that nice and even. And boop, there we go. And I could have actually had half of the car leaning over and then offload three cars at once, but I just like to be uh, safe rather than sorry because I don't want to offload a, a freight car just for it to... <laughs> not load onto the platform. There we go. So we got six. It's probably about to consume five and make more steel pipes. Yep. Yeah, it just... Oh, it consumed three. Or it consumed... Oh, no, it consumes four. Okay. Oh. Crap. Come on. Come on. There you go. That's a good phoenix. We'll continue to offload here, bringing that up the line. And this works out too, because as I'm approaching this this platform to offload my wood, it'll actually line up nicely because it's at the very end of the train. I am definitely gonna... 
I now my strategy for when doing the industries, I fill up each industry till it's fully loaded. So the ironworks, I had it set so, like even after those platforms of iron, raw iron and raw rails was like ready and full, I still kept delivering more cordwood, more ore until it was like completely maxed out. The, when it comes to the ores, I don't fully max them out. Same thing with the uh, crude oil. Because at some point, it's like, okay, you got like 512 here. So that should be more than enough for now to rock many, many loads. Like, I at one point was delivering, maxing out all this iron. So I would just load this entire train up with iron. Raw iron ore. And then I loaded up this area with all the lumber. Oh, I forgot to offload that one. Oops. Oopsie poopsie. And because I'm out of wood, it's now going to actually start to stockpile the raw iron. But, now that I have wood with this, it's going to actually use up some of the raw iron that I just delivered. So, the pipes, or the steel pipes that I need, that are over here, are going to start to max out pretty soon. I can't remember... Yep. Oh yeah, the third it's almost full. It's at 85. It should I think if I'm not mistaken it'll make 5 pipes per per 4 raw iron, 4 wood and I think it's 4 coal. So we can definitely maximize our delivery output. I could I want to try buying more rolling stock and see how many cars I can actually load and deliver at once. Who knows, maybe that'll be in a new video. If you want to see that, if you're interested in more Railroads Online, make sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Don't worry, this is not the end of the video, even though this is going to be a very long video, I'm already aware of that. I could short it up as much as possible, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to deliver as much information and gameplay fun that I can without going too overboard so I'm gonna edit the crap out of this video oh there we go hopefully that gets two platforms ah crap I went over damn it damn it damn it okay well we'll at least unload this one and I have to back the train up god damn it Okay, so I think my estimations were off. Maybe there was an update, but actually, from 85 to 93, I'm actually wondering if it's now eight steel pipes for every low, which is much more beneficial. But again, this is on the medium difficulty, so because I could, st it says 93, and I still have some iron left over. So yeah, I think yeah, 93 being so. If I were to actually yeah, I couldn't really fill that up to exactly 100, but that's okay because I have 10 cars. Each car holds 9 steel pipes, so being 90 steel pipes in one load would actually be very good profit margins. And it would unload that entire amount, so you're going to want to max out your input area. The better you can, the more you can... The better you can max out the input areas, the better off that you are in the later run, so you're not having to do these runs as much. It is a lot to do, especially with all these industries, to constantly keep filling these up. But it makes sense, though, as you use up materials, and it's not like they're using every single inch of wood. In these times, they would just use what they had, and then if they have like a scrap piece of wood, they just throw it out. Alrighty, so we've offloaded all of our cargo. Let's see. Uh, we didn't make as much money. Like, we're still in the 42,000 mark. We probably only made roughly, I'd say, 900 bucks off of that. Which is not too bad. I mean, that would allow me to buy, like, three or four more things of rolling stock. Or if rolling stock's at 250, 300, so yeah, probably three rolling stock. So, as you can imagine, the buildup for getting enough money to buy a large engine comes mostly from repetitive selling of goods so now that we've done that I have not quite built up a wheat farm system yet 
I'm still a little skeptical on how much money doing wheat runs kind of is. I might do one out, out in the swamp area. But, as promised, I'm going to at least prepare this train for a controlled derailment. I've already saved my game after offloading, so I'm not going to derail it here, per se. I'm going to actually derail it at a different spot. So, we're just going I want to test to show how this little system works. This little hoop loop, as I like to call it. Got to go f around 15. Now, the I, I was trying to make it so... I wanted to connect this part of the rail freight depot all the way down to the refinery so I could just have a one straight nice long shot. However, I couldn't get my 3% grade margins that I wanted every time I tried to go down that area or around this mountainside. It just it was proving to be a lot more work than I could. So I figured, screw it. I'm just going to make this hoop loop. That way it loops me around. That, and then as I go down the mountain, I'm at least like straight down rather than having to reverse. There's nothing wrong with reversing down a mountain, but I wouldn't want to do it because all the all your brake power is in your engine. Oh, shaking. We're shaky. Rake and shake. Ah, there's a nice view of the lake over there. I really should build some more rail lines around the lake. Get a nice like little uh, circuit circular. And we'll fill up some more in the firebox. Alright, okay, we're going to close this hatch. Okay, we're going to go straight down. We're going to go full blast. Now, I usually don't try and derail, but th again, I promised that there would be a derailment, like a nice big derailment at the end of this video. So, it's the least I can do. If you watch this video entirely, I do appreciate it because it helps my watch time hours. I've been trying to upload different games and different stuff because my main game that I play is Stormworks. But I've had... Oh, is that I going to hit that rock? Oh, I almost hit that rock. I need to get rid of that rock. That's a bad rock. But my main game that I've been usually playing, Stormworks Build and Rescue. I'm still waiting for updates for that game to happen. But it's not looking like it's going to be fixed anytime soon in time for me to do a Naval Wars Series Season 8 of the, with the Approved Conquest mod, which still also needs to be fixed. So there's only so much that I can really do. Alright. We are going to... I'm hoping this derails over and off the edge of the mountain and not right in this area here. We're going to go full blast tilt. We're going to go as fast as we can downhill. With all these rail cars with it. So I gotta wait until I'm coming off my straight edge. Th this, this thing better derail like the way I hope it does. Because even I'm like, hey, I barely ever derail trains in this game. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Runaway train, runaway train. Oh god. Full blast down a 3% grade. It's gonna gain a lot of speed very quickly. Oh, it's already rickety. Oh, I love the sight of this mountain view. Lon Johnson. It's a runaway train. Runaway train, runaway, runaway train. It's not going to get far when it hits that lane. Oh man. I wonder what turn radius it's going to derail at. 
Oh, we're going 37. Going seven points over its uh, 38. Uh, are we going to derail here? Is this it? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, shit. There we go. Oh, oh, crap. Uh oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. The freight cars are still going. Oh, God. The freight cars are still going. Um, uh, um, okay. I, I'm on the freight cars. Oh, God. I didn't want to do that. Okay. The, oh, God. Oh, God. There they go. There they go. Whoa. Damn it. Okay, that's what I was expecting. Okay, so we technically had two crashes. The engine came off the line first, and then all the freight cars. <laughs> that... Oh my god. <laughs> oh my lord, Lon Johnson. That... That... Oh my. This is the, 50, the 65 to 70% player base plays this game simply to derail trains. I see why though, that was actually kind of fun. Before we sign off, as promised as well, I would show the Easter egg. Now the Easter egg for Pine Lake Valley is this Mount Rushmore ripoff of Railroad Engineers. I think this is supposed to be like the four devs, four developers of the game. They uh, put this little Easter egg into the game you can't really go up the mountain because it pretty much hits the edge of the border. So, maybe we can go up above. Nope. Yeah, no. We have to go up and around this way. Which you can't actually do because we're on, we're literally on the edge of the map here. But yeah, this is the Easter egg. It's a little Mount Rushmore area. And you really wouldn't actually have a railroad up this far, if I'm not mistaken. It's just unnecessary because there's nothing. Riding along the edge border of the actual game map isn't very efficient. Yeah, there's that. <sighs> well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this long Railroads Online video showing my crazy Canadian railway setup. Some of the different strategies that I use to get my railroad industry where it is in the game. As I said, this was about 150 plus, probably around 165 to 170 hours worth of work put into this Pine Lake Valley save file. I do want to extend a big thank you to everyone in my Discord and other people who who actually said, hey, you know, this would actually be a pretty cool video idea. So they gave me the, the idea to do it and what things to try out and stuff. I do apologize that this video was super long. I know you probably only watched like the first three, four minutes. If you did watch the full video, do me a huge thank you and comment down below saying, I watched the video and I want more of this. I want to see more derailments or you want to see more industry playthroughs. If you want anything more of Railroads Online, make sure to comment down below because that's the only way I'll know if people want more videos. And all it takes is one comment. One comment and I'm like, all right, we'll do. I'm not going to sit there and be like, I need 100 comments. No, you just comment once saying you want more railroads. If you want me to use a specific train that isn't the Shea or the Climax because I can't stand those two trains. I just I just can't. They're just, no. They're, they're, they're not the type of trains that I want to drive. I'll drive any other train. I can buy it. I could customize it. But yeah, I hope you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. As always, stay safe and stay happy.